Is it possible that you and I can lose blessings if we wait too long, if we let our Ehud escape? Because opportunity doesn't hang around forever, does it? The windows of heaven are open, but they're not going to be open forever. Now, with your Bible open, please, at Judges chapter 3, we want to speak on this subject, and it's an interesting one. Ehud escaped. Ehud escaped. Now, in this particular story, Ehud escaping was a good escape. It's something that um, was to God's advantage. You see, well, I'll tell you the story soon after we pray. But before we do, uh, I want to tell you something else to help prepare us for this message. Back in the very early 1900s, they were putting out uh, music to the public and they would be on these round wax cylinders. Uh, Old Thomas Edison, he figured out these uh, uh, wax cylinders and and a stylus then went across it and you could record singing or uh, speeches or something like that. And you'd buy these things in cardboard tubes and take them home and, and put them on your machine. And it was bleeding edge, cutting edge technology back then. Well, it wasn't uh, very long. It was about 1920, something like that, where they figured out how to put sound and music on flat discs round discs, which means that they could put something on one side and then they could put something on the other side. Now, what they started doing was calling it side A, side B. And on side A, they would put a very popular um, song by a very popular singer. And then on side B, they would usually put a lesser known And I guess the idea of that was to give more exposure to these other songs to try and increase sales. They were very smart. Um, And so side A, side B, we'd call that the flip side. And they would put the less popular song. Now, our story today about Ehud and the children of Israel defeating the Moabites, this would be on side A. You see, this is the more popular story on side A. But we're going to turn the story around today. And so we have a side B, a flip side. And we're going to find another lesson here. And the lesson is about letting opportunities slip away. Waiting too long will allow your ehuds, your golden opportunities to escape. And this is the idea, what I want to present to you today. And now let's have a word of prayer. Our heavenly father, help us to learn a lesson here on the flip side of this story. Holy spirit of God, speak with every heart today. Our father, if there be any watching today who are not yet born again, please urge them that today is the day of salvation and not to put it off. Lord, I pray for each and every one that the opportunities that you put before us, we would take advantage of and not let them slip through our fingers. So teach us now in Jesus name, we pray. Amen. Well, first let's go to side a of the, the, the disc, shall we? And that's what the story is right before us. And we go back to verse 12 in judges chapter three, Verse 12, and the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. That's sad when God's people slip away from God. My Christian friend, if you're not walking close with the Lord, this is you. This is you, my friend. You have backslidden away from God somehow. You're not walking close with the Lord. This is talking of you. The children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord and the Lord strengthened Eglon, the king of Moab against Israel because they had done evil in the sight of the Lord. And this is always true. Always true that when one of God's children, a saved man, woman, or young person starts straying away from God, getting more worldly, God will have to bring in some chastisement, some punishment, some judgment. 
to get their attention for the purpose of bringing them back close with the Lord. My friend, if you're not walking close with the Lord, there may be some heartache and sorrow in, in store for you in the days to come. I beg you, I urge you be reconciled back to Jesus Christ today. Here in the story in verse 12, the Lord strengthened a guy named Eglon. He was the king of Moab. Now Moab, if you know anything of the Holy Land, you've got the Sea of Galilee and the Jordan River. Then you've got the Dead Sea. On the top of the Dead Sea, kind of to the left is Jerusalem. Just above that is Jericho. But if you go down more to the south of the Dead Sea, this area in the wilderness side, the east side, this used to be Moab and Eglon was the king there. Now the name Eglon means like a calf, C-A-L-F, like a, uh, a baby cow sort of thing, a calf like. Now uh, people wonder what the significance of the name is. It may have had something to do with heathen deities and making sacrifices to their pagan gods. It may have had something to do with that. Be as it may, doesn't matter. This, this guy became king, king of all Moab. And God raised up this evil guy in order to give chastisement to his people, to bring them back. And God will do the same thing in your life, in my life. He'll bring sorrow. There'll be some Eglon out there that God will raise up against us, be it at work or at school, maybe possibly in the home Ooh, that's a tough one. Maybe somewhere in the world, somehow God will raise up and he knows how to do it. He'll raise up an Eglon. So that's why we want to be walking with the Lord. Verse 13. And he, that's Eglon, gathered unto him the children of Ammon and Amalek and went and smote Israel and possessed the city of palm trees. The city of palm trees is a reference to Jericho in Deuteronomy 34 verse three. Jericho is referred to as the city of palm trees. And that was well before this. And so here in judges, the city of palm trees, no doubt was speaking of Jericho and we have Eglon coming and possessing it. You say, well, I thought that Jericho kind of fell apart after Joshua came across. Yes, but that doesn't stop the bad guys from rebuilding it. Does it? In fact, in Jesus day, Jericho was still a very much alive and vibrant city. They just rebuilt it. And so here, the bad guy, Eglon, he came and he dwelt in the city of palm trees. So the children of Israel served Eglon, the king of Moab. Look at that. 18 years, 18 years. They labored under this tyrant king and they had to obey his every whim and wish. Oh my, oh my, if only they had lived for the Lord, this wouldn't have happened. But when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised them up a deliverer, a young Jewish man named Ehud, the son of Gera, a Benjamite, a man left-handed. And by him, the children of Israel sent a present unto Eglon, the king of Moab. So they went up to Jericho, but Eglon made him a, a, a not, but Ehud made him uh, a dagger, which had two edges of a cubit length. So it was about 18 inches long, great big one, a dagger. And he did gird it under his raiment upon his right thigh. And he brought the present unto Eglon, king of Moab. And Eglon was a very fat man. You say, well, that, that doesn't sound very nice to talk that way about people. Hey, this is God's commentary. He put it in the Bible. Eglon was a very lusty man. He just ate and ate like a horse, I guess. He was obese. He was a very fat man. Verse 18, and he went and made an end to offer the present. Uh, He sent away the people that bear the present, but he himself turned again uh, from the quarries that were by Gilgal and said, I have a secret errand unto thee, O king who said, keep silence, keep silence. And all that stood by him went out from him. And Ehud came unto him and he was sitting in a summer parlor. Eglon was in this summer parlor, this special room he built for himself and probably had some uh, breezeway through it 
to a, a, a roof to shield him from the sun and something that would pick up the, the breezes for the summer. It says, which he had for himself alone. And he who had said, I have a message from God unto thee. And he arose out of his seat and he who had put forth his left hand and took the dagger from his right thigh. So you get the picture there, his left hand, he reaches over to his right thigh, pulls out this dagger and thrust it into his belly. You say, Ooh, that doesn't sound good. No, not for Eglon. Anyhow, verse 22 and the haft also went in the haft was that part on the handle. So not only did the blade go in, but the part of the handle went in with it and the fat closed upon the blade. I mean, if it's, it's so gruesome, it's funny. Uh, so that he could not draw the dagger out of his belly. It went in and got stuck. And look what happened. The dirt came out. Now the dirt is a reference to the foul stuff, the foul stuff. And so I'll leave that up to you to figure out what it was that came out of this big fat man, Eglon. And then Ehud went forth through the porch and shut the doors of the parlor upon him and locked them. And by the way, for those of you who are interested in little things like this, this is the very first time in the Bible. There's ever any mention of locking of doors right there. Interesting, isn't it? So when he was gone out, his servants came. And when they saw the behold, the doors of the parlor were locked. They said, surely he covereth his feet. It's just a nice way of saying he's going to the bathroom. And verse 25, and they tarried till they were ashamed. So they waited and waited and they said, well, it's taken too long. And behold, he opened not the door of the the parlor. Therefore they took a key um, and opened them. And behold, their Lord was fallen down dead on the earth. Verse 26 is what I want you to see. And Ehud escaped. He escaped while they tarried. While they waited and waited and waited and waited and looked at their watches and waited and waited, Ehud took off. He escaped. And so today we want to look at the flip side of this story. You can all understand the side A of the story, how that God used this and Ehud rallied the the people and they they came and they attacked uh, the forces of Eglon. Eglon is dead, but the Moabites there and put them all to death. And so they got victory. The next few verses talk about that and how they uh, uh, subdued um, that day, all of the, the bad guys. And so they won a great victory and there's a great lesson there too. But today we're going to turn the record over and we're going to look at the flip side of the story. And the flip side is they let Ehud escape while they waited and waited. Ehud Talk off. That's what happens, folks. Let me ask you this question. Have you ever felt in life that you've missed out on a golden opportunity? The longer we live, usually the little more history we build behind us included in that history are ups and downs and blessings and burdens. But sometimes in that history are stories of lost opportunities. Have you ever had a lost opportunity? If you live long enough, you probably will, right? Verse 26, and Ehud escaped while they tarried. You know, some people feel that way about houses. Oh, I should have bought a house. I should have done it. I should have bought my house years ago. Now look at the state of things. And listen, I can sympathize with you. It used to be that standard operating procedure for buying a house is you do not spend more than four times your annual income, your annual household income. You do not buy a house that costs more than four times that that was years ago. Then it went up to five times in the um, uh, Montreal and Ottawa area. I believe it's now six times that's going you know, into dangerous territory in Toronto, it's 10 times. You can't buy a house unless you're spending 10 times. That's getting right into the red zone, folks. 
in Vancouver, it's 12 times. You can't buy a place unless you're spending 12 times your annual income. How do people do it? I'll tell you how they do it. The interest rates today are so razor thin low. And so people are financing themselves right to the teeth and he's financing and she's financing as much as they possibly can to buy a house. And they lock in for five years. Well, I have news for you. Five years doesn't last very long. And at the end of that five years, if the interest rates go up one or two percentage points, they could be hooped. All of their gains now become losses. So you say, well, what do we do? What do we do? You need to really wait on the Lord and let God do a miracle for you. Don't rush and push. Don't obey all of the so-called financial gurus in the world. All they want to do is make money off you and get commissions. You wait on the Lord. and Let him tell you what to do. God can do miracles, folks. He can prepare a banquet in the desert. He can surely help you with a house. But some people, they feel, oh, I waited too long. Now look at things. I wish I had bought my house five years ago, four years ago, even three years ago. But now look at things. And it feels like Ehud escaped while they waited and waited and waited. Now, please understand, I am not telling you to run out and buy a house. Okay, please don't make that mistake. Oh, pastor told me to go out. No, he didn't. He told you to go to the Lord. And get your wisdom from God and God will lead you. He'll guide your steps and the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. And though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholdeth him in his hand. As long as you are following the Lord's direction. If you go your own direction, you may end up sorry. You know, there's always a story about a young man who waits too long before asking a pretty girl out on a date and he waits too long. And all of a sudden he finds out his best friend is now dating her. There Ehud escaped. How about that? Someone once said that opportunities are like sunrises, but if you wait too long, you'll miss them. Let me tell you an interesting story. It started back in 1996. How many of you were alive in 1996? Well, most of you back in 1996, these two young guys, they got together and they were going to build uh, an internet search engine that they called back rub like your back, a back rub. That's what they called it back rub. And it was a pretty good little search engine. And after about three years, They had grown to three employees. So it wasn't exactly like it was taking the world by storm. And by the way, they changed the name of their search engine from back rub to Google. These two young guys, Larry page and Sergey Brin, they decided it's time to sell a company. They started with nothing and now they have a company and they figured it was worth a million dollars. Now, one of the big major search engines back then was a company called Excite, E-X-C-I-T-E, Excite. They had started in 1994 and they quickly rose to become a major player on the world scene. Uh, And it was run by a man named George Bell. He was the CEO, the chief executive officer. Excite had been Uh, financially backed by a company called Kleiner Perkins. They were an investment firm that put up the money for Excite. And so Kleiner Perkins heard about Google for sale. The asking price was $1 million. And so they sent George Bell. They told George, go and talk to them. Man, that's a good company. Maybe buy it. And George sat down with them and he rejected buying Google for a million dollars because he said it's too expensive. So the company Kleiner Perkins managed to talk um, Larry and Sergey down to $750,000. George Bell rejected it because he said it's too expensive. And so 
Larry and Sergey couldn't sell their company, so they ended up keeping it. And today, estimates put the value at Google somewhere in the neighborhood of a trillion dollars. With all of the, the companies they own and all of the income and what it's worth, they put it in around that neighborhood. Now, I wonder what George Bell is thinking these days. He could have bought the company for $750,000. Folks, that's less than the price of a house in Surrey, British Columbia. They could have owned Google. Ehud escaped, didn't he? They let their Ehud escape. Hey, I'll tell you another interesting story. Um, back in 2004, a young college guy, he, um, he invented a, a little website that he called Facebook. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg. And so by 2006, Facebook had just chew, taken off like crazy. And he was ready to sell it. Time to sell it. And Mark shook hands um, with Yahoo. Uh, they were going to buy it for one billion, not one million, but one billion dollars. But soon after they shook hands, Yahoo backed away from the deal. And they made a counter offer of 800 million. But the damage was done. And Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg had had enough and he had second thoughts and he backed away from the deal. And now Facebook almost owns the world. Yahoo missed a golden opportunity because they waited too long. Ehud had escaped. Now there's probably other details to that story. There always are. But basically the bottom line is a missed opportunity. Our hero in this story, Ehud, the name Ehud means I will give thanks. Guess who he's going to give thanks to? He's a young Jewish boy. Huh? Who's he going to give thanks to? He's going to give thanks to the Lord. I will give thanks probably for the blessings of God. That's what you give thanks for usually. So in other words, Ehud was connected with the blessings of God. And in this particular case in Judges chapter three, with deliverance of Israel from the enemies of God. Someone has humorously said that opportunity knocks once, but temptation keeps on hammering. Is it possible that you and I can lose blessings if we wait too long? If we let our Ehud escape because opportunity doesn't hang around forever, does it? The windows of heaven are open, but they're not going to be open forever. They say that people are often led through life by what they consider their weakness. For example, if a man feels weak in the area of education, he's looked down upon, he's called stupid. Well, he'll naturally want to have much uh, professional education, much worldly education. Another example, if a man feels he's financially poor, that th he's weak financially, he will naturally want the world's wealth. Likewise, if a man places excessive value, maybe on his body, he feels he's a weakling, a 98 pound weakling. He's going to want physical health and beauty. And so this is why they say that often people are led through life by what they consider their weakness. And there are times, there are times in life when being sensitive to your weakness can make you actually ready for opportunities. Take your Bible and turn to the new Testament gospel of Luke chapter 18. Let's go there quickly, folks. Luke chapter number 18. And here's an amazing story of a man in his weakness. And he was sensitive to opportunity in Luke chapter 18. And please look with me at verse number 35. It came to pass that as he was come nigh unto Jericho, there's that Jericho again. A certain blind man sat by the wayside 
begging and hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passeth by. And he cried saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. You know the story. The crowd told him, shut up. But he cried out all the more. His weakness made him sensitive to the opportunity that would never come again. Jesus of Nazareth was coming through Jericho for the last time. He was on his way to Jerusalem where he would be crucified. Here was this man's last and final opportunity to get a miracle. And his sensitivity to his weakness made him sensitive to an opportunity that would never come again. What if this blind man, Bartimaeus by name, what if he had just said, Oh, 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 you're right. I shouldn't bother the master. I'll just sit and wait here for another opportunity. He would have waited until he died because this was his opportunity. He did not allow his one and only Ehud to escape. Did he? No, he didn't. You know, sometimes we don't recognize Ehud. We mistake him for a nobody. We don't realize what an opportunity he is. It's often only when we look back that we realize, Mamma Mia, that was my Ehud. Now he's gone. That's why we need to be always sensitive and always on our knees. Lord, open my eyes to the opportunities, to the potential. Lord, don't let me let an opportunity slip through my fingers because I might not recognize it as an opportunity. And that is very true. My friend church ministry opportunities of putting gospel invitations in mailboxes for some of you, you might not recognize that's Ehud, but the day will come. You'll stand before the savior and he'll say, what have you done for me? to get the gospel into this city that I put you in. Did you jump on the fire brigade? No, I didn't Lord. I didn't realize that that was my Ehud and I let it escape. I am so sorry. Opportunities to serve the Lord. Yes. You know what? Any opportunity to serve the Lord in your church is an Ehud. Why they're calling for volunteers to come and do this and to do that. Ooh, no, I'm nah. And you let your Ehud escape. Faith promise for missions is a golden opportunity for everyone. Everyone, everyone get on board and stay on board. Keep supporting missions, support missions in the good days and in the not so good days. Support missions in the sun and in the rain, in the up and in the down, in the easy and in the tough. Support the gospel preaching missionaries. Last month, month of March, our missions giving fell way down. It looks like almost a half. Say, what happened to all of the missions money? Where to go? I don't know. Only God knows. Well, God and the people who didn't put it in, obviously. I want to encourage you. Don't let your Ehud escape. You know something else? Our Bible college. Our Bible college is a wonderful Ehud. Folks, everyone has an opportunity to benefit from Ehud, from the Bible college. And listen, I want you to know something, something pretty exciting. That the Bible college is about eight years old now. We started in 2013. Some didn't think it would last a year. It's been eight years and our Bible college has been an incredible blessing. Listen to dozens and dozens of Christian people. I have some statistics since we started 15 students have graduated our one year Bible program. That's in Christian life foundation. Since we started six more People have graduated our four year bachelor program in biblical studies. Since we started 13 more Christians have taken at least one course. Since we started, we now have nine online. Yes, we're up online, online students. And currently we have four more full-time students in class 
plus one more part-time in class. The numbers add up to dozens and dozens. I am excited. No, they don't add up to hundreds and hundreds, but neither did the number of disciples in Jesus little band. He had 12 and one of them was Judas. But yet with those 12, look what the Lord has done. I am so thrilled. I am so excited about Pacific West Baptist college. Get on board. Little children get on board. The opportunities opportunities abound. Don't let your Ehud escape. Oh, I don't think I could take a Bible course because I'm a little bit older now and I don't think I could keep up. You'd be surprised. You could take a course online at your own pace if need be. Never stop growing. Never stop studying. Never stop learning. And the Lord will never stop blessing you. There are many more Ehuds, but I'm saying don't let your Ehud escape. You might never get another chance. You don't know. But then again, I have to be honest. God is the God of second chances for many people. A guy named Lot, L-O-T. He was the nephew of Abraham and he went and he lived a good chunk of his life down in Sodom. And you know, he nearly lost his life. He nearly perished in Sodom as he tarried and waited and waited. The two angels had to literally grab him and drag him out of the city. Him, his wife, she didn't want to go either. And their two daughters and they had to drag him out. And then God destroyed Sodom and its neighboring city, Gomorrah. He nearly lost his life, didn't he? The end of this month, we've got the FBI. No, not the Federal Bureau something better. We've got the fire brigade Institute. The fire brigade Institute is an opportunity. Don't let it escape. It's your Ehud. Friday, April the 30th at 7 PM and Friday, May the 7th, 7 PM, two Friday nights, 7 PM for no more than one hour each. And you will get trained, training, training, and it's good fellowship too. And it won't cost you a penny. We're funding and footing everything. We're doing all the work for you. We're preparing the banquet table. And the invitations will soon be going out. There's an Ehud you don't want to let escape is the FBI. You know, I want to remind you again. If you're not supporting missions, you're letting your Ehud escape. You will get greatly blessed. Not just here on earth, but in heaven, people that have been supporting missions for a long time, they'll tell you it's a wonderful blessing. And where do these blessings come like out of the blue in their lives? God's blessing. He's blessing. And God always promises to bless. Another Ehud might be your early morning prayer closet. How many of you had your early morning prayer closet this morning? Did you slip away and spend time with your savior or did Ehud escape on you again? You know, you've got to grab hold of Ehud sometimes grab hold of them. Don't let them escape. Now, many of you do have an early morning prayer closet. Hallelujah. Many of you are supporting missions. Praise God. Many of you are giving to sacrifice Sunday. Amen. These are wonderful things. And folks, you who are doing it are a good example and encouragement for others who are not yet doing it. You've come to Sunday morning church, haven't you? Amen. You didn't let your Ehud escape. Did you No, sir? What are you going to do tonight at six o'clock? Now, if you have to go to work, I understand that. But if you're not working, what are you going to do tonight at six o'clock? Are you going to let Ehud escape on you? Listen, come tonight, finish off the Lord's day in the house of the Lord together with us. I'll tell you another Ehud. Sadly, sadly, so many parents let this Ehud escape their children, their children. They're not taking advantage of the time. They have the children with them in the home, under the same roof. They're not taking advantage, enough advantage of that. 
They're not having enough family times. They're not having enough Bible time with a family altar. They're not having enough times of laughter. They're not having enough times of service for Jesus. And the kids are just left to do their own thing. And before you know it, they move out. Your Ehud has escaped. You'll regret those days and you'll never be able to get them back. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Don't let your Ehud escape. If you have children in the home, thank God and hang on, hang on to their little hearts. D.L. Moody. I'm, I'm just about done here. D.L. Moody, the great evangelist. He was always trying to win people to Jesus. And this one particular Sunday night in his church service, October the 8th, 1871, Sunday night, October the 8th, 1871, he had a large crowd, a full house, and he was telling the people about Jesus and how they needed Jesus as their savior. And then he made the greatest mistake of his life. He said to the people, now the service is over. I want you to go home and think about what I've told you and come back next Sunday night, next Sunday and make a decision for Jesus. And he dismissed the crowd and the crowd went out. And DL Moody, as he himself later was exiting the church building, he could hear the ringing of fire, fire bells, He could see a glow not far away and he could start smelling smoke. Folks, it was the night of the Chicago fire. It burned up a huge portion of Chicago. Many, 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 many people lost their lives. Moody himself lost everything. His home went up in flames. But the worst thing is he didn't, he didn't see most of those people ever again. He never saw them. And for the rest of his life, he had to live with the fact that he let his Ehud escape an opportunity, a golden opportunity. And I tell you that to tell you this, if you're watching this or listening to this message and you have not yet repented of your sins and trusted in Jesus Christ as your savior, you may not have another opportunity. This may be it for you. You need to run to the savior today. You need to throw down your weapons of rebellion. You need to come to Jesus and ask him today to forgive you all of your sins You need to ask him to be your savior and the Lord, the master of your life. You need to do that. Before it's too late. Don't let your Ehud escape. Would you bow your head in prayer with me now? Oh, our heavenly father, we know that Jesus stands at the door and knocks on people's hearts. They have an opportunity to hear his voice and open the door and receive him into their lives. Heavenly father, I pray that anyone who's watching, who's not yet done that will do that today. And then will write in and tell us that they've just received Jesus as their Lord and savior. My father, I pray also for your people, the wonderful people connected with this wonderful church. How I thank you for them. I ask you father to open the eyes of their understanding that they would see the opportunities that we're calling Ehud and they would grab them and take advantage of them. Oh, my father, we do it by faith, but you always reward faith. You always have, you always will father bless your people today, bless their families, bless their bodies, their health, their future, Bless their reputation. Bless their interpersonal relationships. Father, help them to make good decisions that will result in great things. 
And we'll thank you, love you, and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching the message today. We invite you to join us again every Sunday and Wednesday for more inspiring messages from God's Word. Thank you.